Sports Beat is the best show on the planet. I want it on Friday and Saturday night. Go Chargers! Yeah! A KSLSports.com presentation. Game Night Live kicks off now. Presented by America First Credit Union. We found our biggest fans. Yes. I love it. Week seven of the Utah high school football season was so much fun. We're excited to show you why. Jeremiah Jensen, Sands Farnsworth, with you for the next half hour. Some exciting finishes Friday. But what happened at Corner Canyon was just ridiculous. And I hope it's only a prelude of what's to come in the postseason. Our Game Night Live Game of the Week featured the two best teams in the state. Number one, Corner Canyon in their 18-game win streak against the second-ranked and defending 6A champion, Lone Peak Knights. This game definitely lived up to the hype. It did. Let's show you what happened. We'll start in the first quarter. The first turnover of the game. And then a bleeding to the first score. Great atmosphere on Friday night. Lone Peak with some trouble at the mesh point. The ball's put on the ground. And the Corner Canyon defense would pounce. Josh Wilson would come out of the pile with the football. Next play, Austin Bell scores from two yards out. Give Corner Canyon a 7-0 lead. It would be a while before the next touchdown because the defense was the story in this game. Lone Peak's defense was particularly good. Jared Fotu was all over the place. Double-digit tackles, tackles for loss, a couple of sacks. Then late in the third, this play gave Lone Peak momentum. Justin Osler with the pick. I don't know how, but he snuck in and wrestled this away from the receiver. It would set up the Lone Peak offense in the fourth quarter. Lone Peak made a quarterback change. There's Jay Hill taking in on the action. It brought in junior Luke Romney. He wasn't perfect, but he sparked the Knights offense. A touchdown pass to Trajan Hansen. Lone Peak takes a 10-7 lead. Then with two and a half minutes left, Romney rolls left on fourth down to Sean Wood. They went for it and it paid off. Lone Peak takes a 17-7 lead. With 2-17 left, we thought the game was over, right? Nope. Corner Canyon came alive in the final two minutes. They did not quit. And with their explosive pass game, they're never out of it. Cole Hagen and the Chargers drive down and score. Talmadge Handley the touchdown at 17-14 Lone Peak. Corner Canyon still had three timeouts, forced a Lone Peak punt, and they have 30 seconds from their own 20. A catch by Handley. A catch by Noah Kerr to get to midfield. Then Hagen going for the win. Pump fake, fires, and he has Handley. Down inside the 10 with 11 seconds left, a 40-yard connection. Corner Canyon gets two shots into the end zone. Hagen. He's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown, oh Corner God. Canyon. <laughs> Cody Hagen has put Corner Canyon oh, on top. Mayhem. This is ESPN all day. Hagen to Hagen. Oh, One yes. brother to another. And the Corner Canyon streak will survive. 14 points in two minutes. Corner Canyon didn't give up a crushing loss for Lone Peak. But what a finish. Maybe we'll see this in the playoffs. Corner Canyon remains unbeaten. Their win streak, 19 games. You had a hard time throughout the first three and a half quarters, and then you found something. And what was that? Um, I think our guys just... You know, we just decided that we needed to kick it into gear. And it was, I mean, it was kind of like a now or never type of thing. And so we just, I mean, we just got it done. You scored 14 points in two minutes. Have you ever done that before? Um, no, I don't think so. No, that's, I don't know. It was just our defense got stops on their last possession there. And I mean, without that, we wouldn't have gotten it, so. Simply amazing. That wasn't the only great game from Region 4, though. Just on the other side of the point of the mountain, Pleasant Grove was visiting Sky Ridge High School. Pleasant Grove's only loss this season was last week against Corner Canyon. Sky Ridge coming into it with a 6-0 record. In the first quarter, the Vikings on the march. Caleb Campbell, though, he wants to stop it. Uh, actually, he's the one getting intercepted in the end zone by Malai Tanuvasa. Tanuvasa wants to start, and he, look at this. He's making a house call from 100 yards away. Are you kidding me? 7-0 Falcons. Uh, this guy needs a little bit of oxygen after that one as well. In the second quarter, Sky Ridge adds to their lead. Emmett Call is going to hook up with Dylan Samuels. 
Got it. 13-0 lead. Falcons missed the PAT there, but Pleasant Grove, they didn't fold. Running a wildcat formation, Evan Robinson takes the snap, goes left, sees lots of green, gets some blocks, and he's into Falcon territory. And he's going to keep it going with his arm. Robinson to Kale Mickelson. Touchdown, Vikings. And then a few minutes later, starter Caleb Campbell's back in at quarterback. The screen pass to Rex Connors. Makes a couple guys miss and check out the stiff arm. Nice. Shrugs him off. Vikings with their first lead of the game. In the third quarter, Sky Ridge keeps plugging away and gets a big play from their quarterback. Call on the keeper. 47 yards for the score. They'd add another one in the third. But the Vikings just won't give up. Down by six, and Evan Robinson punches it in. Vikings take a one-point lead on, on that touchdown. Sky Ridge would get one last drive, but the Vikings defense holds strong with back-to-back -back sacks. Pleasant Grove hands Sky Ridge their first loss of the 2019 season. Another monster matchup, this one in Region 3. Could East topple Bingham and set up another big game with Harriman next Friday? for first place in Region 3. It was scoreless until 9.40 left in the second quarter. Bingham's Mason Christiansen takes the direct snap, and he's going to go 70 yards. Christiansen with a big play, puts the Miners up 7-0. Just before the half, East responds Iverson Tapasoa. The Leopards also get the two-point conversion. It's 8-9 Bingham, 9-8 Bingham at the half. Out of the third quarter, Bingham's Preston Larson. He's going to take it in for the 16-8 lead. East keeps coming, though. Fourth quarter, 30 seconds left. Isaac Zimmerman into the end zone. So the Leopards are within two. They need a two-point conversion to send it to overtime. But that Bingham defense comes up big. The Miners with a big win at home over East. Big game in Region 8 with Springville hosting Salem Hills on homecoming night. The students at Springville, they were juiced for this one, ready to roll. But Salem Hills, they came to crash their party. And it started on the first drive. Jordan Ware with the big run gets the Skyhawks inside the 15-yard line. The Red Devil defense put together a nice goal line stand on first and second down. But on third down, Jared Elmer punches it in. The quarterback sneaks 7-0. Salem Hills leading. Springville came alive in the second quarter. Salem Hills is going to run a fake punt in their own territory, but it is going nowhere. So the Red Devils ball and Peyton Murphy finds a rhythm. Austin Mortensen with the catch gets it into the red zone. Murphy goes to Mortensen again, this time to tie the game up. The Springville Fire Department celebrating it with the sirens, but Salem Hill would have some celebrating of their own to do still. End of the half, Elmer to Jake Muter. Skyhawks by a touchdown at the break. Now Springville gets the ball to start the second half. The Skyhawks, though, they're just going to take it right back. The forced fumble here. It's on the turf, and it leads to a touchdown pass from Elmer to Devin Johnson, threading it through three defenders. Wow. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it, guys. Elmer to Johnson again. This time he just dumps it off to him, and the big guy's going to rumble in for the score. Elmer runs for two, throws for three. Salem Hills, they're still undefeated. Another big game in Region 8, Provo at Wasatch. Close game in the fourth. Bulldogs up by one. But then Dallin Havea does this. 27 yards for the score. Dogs take an eight-point lead. Wasatch trying to get one back. But Ryan Harward with the interception. Pick six. Provo with a big win on the road, 28 to 19. Farmington, 2 0 in Region 5 play, hosting second place Viewmont. Farmington struggled in this one, but had a chance late, trailing 14 9. Wyatt Evertson to Jude Cantrell. Gets them in Viking territory, but then Evertson. Intercepted. Jesse Layton laying it all out, and Viewmont is back. A huge win for the Vikings now tied with Farmington and Bonneville for first in Region 5. In Region 10, two undefeated teams, Park City and Mountain View, both 6-0.
first quarter here, first play of the game. Jack Skidmore, the bomb to Jake Cohn. Miners down inside the 10 just like that. They would score two plays later. Still in the first, Skidmore Cone connection worked once. Why not again, right? 30 yard touchdown makes it 14 0 after one quarter. Second quarter, Mountain View, they're going for it on fourth down, but Chase Johansson comes up with the sack, sets the Miners up at midfield. Things are looking good. Next play, Dylan Bauer gets loose up the middle. He's going to get all the way down inside the five. Nice stiff arm there along the way. Bauer's going to take it in on the next play, and the Miners have a 21-0 lead at the half. Third quarter, Miners offense still firing on all cylinders. Skidmore to Mark McCurdy. Up top, it's a 75-yard catch and run. Park City, they're 7-0. Lehigh's been one of the hottest teams in the state. Winners of five straight by an average of 41 points. That includes a 35-14 win over a very good Provo team. How would they measure up against a team like Tim Few? Well, in the second quarter, Tim Few's Elijah Allen's going to find Baylor Erickson for a 15-yard score, and it was 7-0 Thunderbirds. After the half, Tim Few got rolling. Actually, Sione Moa got rolling. 14-3 at that point. And then a 10-yard run. He scored the last three touchdowns of the game, and Tim Few rolls over Lehigh. Well, what happens when you put two teams that are really hungry for a win on the same field against each other? Well, last night we got that. Bountiful and Box Elder. That's what they gave us. The Braves had lost four of their last five. The Bees had lost three in a row. Both these teams hungry for a win. This game was a back and forth battle early on. Check out sophomore Drew Bowles flying in here to block the punt for Bountiful. You know, Box Elder's defense was pretty electric, though, in this one, especially Gavin Hansen. Beats the tackle around the edge, gets the sack. Next quarter, Hansen's still flexing on him. Look at this. He blows up the run. Nowhere to go. Third quarter, down 7-zip. Parker Buchanan gets Box Elder on the board. A 20-yard touchdown run ties the game at 7. Less than a minute to go in the quarter. Jared McCann puts the Braves back in front 14-7. In the fourth quarter, this was clutch time for Buchanan. Let's one fly. Nate Wheatley on the catch, avoids two defenders, and he's gone. 80 yards. This ties the game at 14. Five seconds left in the game. Look at this. Buchanan avoids the pressure, hits Logan Holgate for the game winner. Box Elder tops Bountiful 21 to 14. Another homecoming game, Davis hosting Syracuse. Bridger Hambler rambles 52 yards for the score. A few minutes later, David Spute, he's going to tie it up on the five-yard touchdown catch from Chance Trujillo. But Syracuse rolled from there. Hamblin to tie Burke. Syracuse scores 31 answered. They win it 38-6. Let's go to Region 9, Desert Hills hosting Canyon View. Final seconds of the second quarter, Canyon View going for the long field goal. It's well short, and Desert Hills decides to return it. Jacob Wilkins, 99 yards for the score. It was 35-7 at the half. Elijah Alton adds a 12-yard touchdown late. This was all Desert Hills, 48-7 the final. All right, first place on the line in Region 9. Dixie visiting Pine View. Panthers trailing 20 to 17 in the third. And McLeod Croton finds Jacob Nobili to take the 24-20 lead. Dixie was down but not out. A chance to win it with a 30-yard field goal, but it was no good. Pine View gets the win. Now let's go north. Region 11, Green Canyon lost their last two games, looking to turn it around at home. Brennan Dean runs it in for the touchdown. They went up 35-0. Bear River in the red zone trying to get a spark. And Green Canyon puts that spark out. Wolves get their second shutout of the season. Nice bounce back for them, 35-0.
After starting the season with two straight wins, Ridgeline has gone on a bit of a tailspin. They've lost four in a row. Hasn't gone much better for Logan either, though. Both teams trying to avoid being the last team in Region 11 without a region win. This game had a ton of offense in it, too. But things really got crazy in the fourth quarter. Ridgeline trailing 28-24 when jo Joseva Damuni gives the Riverhawks the lead. Logan punches right back. Ethan Wilson, the keeper, 14 yards there. They're up 34 to 31. Ridgeline marching to win it, but Jalen Holth gets the interception, returns it for the game ceiling touchdown. Logan gets the 10 point win. The one lost Skyview Bobcats taking on Mountain Crest. Fourth quarter, nice catch by Brigham Lewis. That's gonna set up this pass from Kaysen Carlson. Mason Falsliff and the Bobcats shut out Mountain Crest 23 to nothing. Checking in on Hunter and Kearns, the Cougars pulling out the bag of tricks on the first series of the game. Isaiah Afatasi on the halfback pass to Jeffrey Passa. This is going to go for a 40 yard gain. Naki Leha caps it with a touchdown run. Later in the first quarter, Dakota Lind lets it fly to Jack Kelly. I don't know how he did it, but Kelly stays on his feet for a 59-yard touchdown. Leha had three touchdowns. Lind threw for five scores. Kelly and Afatasi each had two scores. And Kearns wins big, 51-15. That's a lot of scores. Maple <laughs> Mountain visiting Spanish Fork. Maple Mountain got a huge game from Kyson Hall. A bomb here, 76 yards for the touchdown. Got to celebrate. Then in the second quarter, Hall again. 36 yards for that score, and the Golden Eagles win this one 45 21. After opening the season with a loss to Pleasant Grove, Riverton has been one of the hottest teams in the state. Winners of five straight games entering the weekend. They kept the win streak going last night against Copper Hills. It was the homecoming game for Riverton. This is Carson Lloyd right here, a senior at Riverton with special needs, allowed to dress in uniform for the game. He's pumping up the student section. And how about this? They're going to put him out there to run a play from offense, and he takes it to the house. The touchdown for Carson. And you got to look at this winning smile he has there in the huddle as well. Doesn't get much better than that. In the first quarter, Riverton decides to go for it on fourth down and six. Jackson Howard to Braden Woodruff. It's a 30-yard touchdown for a 7-0 lead. In the second quarter, Copper Hills, they can air it out. Cody Lazenby with the lefty bomb to Tommy Peak. The missed PAT had him down by a point. Just before the half, look at this D. The strip sack, ball recovered in the end zone by McKay Ballard. Riverton wins again, 31-6. Undefeated North San Pete visiting 5-1 Juab. Their only loss to undefeated Salem Hills. Juab dominated this big game. Kate way. Bowering had a big night. Four touchdowns, including this 21-yard pass from Zach Cowan, and the patience pays off. What a play. Juab and Manti now tied for first in Region 14. Speaking of Manti, they moved to 2-0 in Region 14 after a 21-7 win over Union. Jax Perry threw three touchdown passes, including two to Travis Thompson. Manti now 6-0. They're one of only seven undefeated teams in the state. Have Mountain View on the show. The high school weekend wouldn't be complete without bringing you the best of week seven right now. Yeah, it's time for the game night live highlight reel. Enjoy.
Hagan. He's got it. Touchdown. Touchdown, oh Porter God. Canyon. Oh. 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 Cody Hagan has put Porter Canyon oh. on top. Mayhem. This is ESPN all day. Hagan to Hagan. Oh, One yes. brother to another. And the Corner Canyon streak will survive. We begin our primetime performers with Maple Mountain's Kyson Hall. Hall's the younger brother of BYU quarterback Jaron Hall, who will now be the starting quarterback for BYU after Zach Wilson's injury against Toledo. Four touchdowns on the night, two from 70-plus yards. Bryson Barnes has done it again, my friends. The Milford quarterback threw for 401 yards and four touchdowns against Kanab. Oh, and guess what? He also caught a touchdown pass in Milford's 47-21 win. It wasn't his best game, and credit Lone Peak's defense for that. But what Cole Hagen did in the final two minutes of Corner Canyon's comeback was special. Yeah. He led two 80-yard scoring drives in two minutes wow. without the aid of an onside kick. <laughs> a 40-yard bomb to Talmadge Handley to set up the game winner to his brother Cody. That's a night he'll tell his grandkids about. Yeah, that's an awesome one. Well, Highlines... Uh, Highlands, Maya Giles had four touchdowns this weekend, two on the ground. One of those was a 51 yarder, and he also had two punt returns for scores, both longer than 50 yards. Top plays brought to you by Subway. Let's start with Sky Ridge High School. Malay Tianovasa with the pick. And then the six. Yeah, how about this one? Uh, you got to love it. Speaking of this Maple Mountains, Aiden Saley, 99-yard kick return. 